Nia Tawanta is one of our poster childs because it's consistently toxic, right? In some years, it is extremely toxic. In some years, it's very low. So we started working there back in maybe 2004 or 2005 when they had a series of animal fatalities along the lake. But it's, I mean, we can immediately recognize Neotawanta samples coming through the instruments because, you know, it is always going to be toxic. Uh, back when I was about nine years old, uh, my dad and I used to come out here with a boat and we used to fish off the island. You could actually see the bottom in certain spots of this lake. It used to be nice and clean. See this guy right here? He should be nice and colorful. All right. Well, unfortunately, what's happening is the oxygen is getting out of the water due to the blue-green algae. And it should be all different colors, like a rainbow almost. Oop. They're always on the list. They're a perpetually toxic lake. It's a big, huge mud puddle. I hate to use the word, but that's really what it is. It's too shallow, right? And it has just huge levels of fossil. And so th this report, the first one here, tells them what their blue-green algal abundance is. So, for example, there's a moderate blue-green algal abundance, and the second one tells them what their toxin level is. I'd like to see it dredged out, but I know it's expensive. It'd be about 20 feet deep, and it might even open up the springs underneath. Right. It's going to take, you know, a decade of consistent effort to, to try to get the lake back to where you really need it to be. But, you know, I always use the example of Onondaga Lake. You know, people said Onondaga Lake was dead and it would never be recovered. And, you know, it's made great strides. You know, so if you make the investment and do it, then there's certainly a possibility that you can clean it up.